What's up, everybody? This is Hassan Chabon, Second Eye Connection Health and Wellness. Coming at you with another video. Today, we're going to our topic is Eat to Heal. With a subtitle, Eat to Live. We want to encourage you to check our podcast out at um, on Spotify and anywhere you get your podcast. Just check, check out the Second Eye Connection podcast. Um... Also, check out our other podcast, The Man Means Mind Podcast. We deal with your physical development, food, making the right food choices, also working out, keeping physically fit, also dealing with your mind, getting the mind clear, getting the mind focused, developing that positive mental attitude. Also, spiritual clarity. And spiritual clarity goes beyond religion. Religion and spirituality are two different things. So we want you to develop your spiritual or emotional clarity so you can face the world. You have to face the world on three, basically four levels. Physically fit, mentally fit, spiritually fit, and physically fit. So we invite you to check those podcasts out. Also, the YouTube channel, Man Means Mind, as well as this YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, Hit that like button, subscribe, and share the video. So, they will want to focus, they would say, on eating to heal. And in that vein, the food that you eat should be food that is made by nature, made by God or the Creator. You should eat natural, you should concentrate on eating natural food. Avoid man made food. Avoid Food that has been modified by man, GMOs, genetically modified foods. Try to eat food that God created, that came up naturally out of the ground. So you want to eat food that is consistent to your genetic makeup. And that's the food that God created, the natural food. The artificial food, man-made food, processed food is not consistent to your genetic makeup. When we violate the natural laws, I mean, we eat food that is man-made, food that is not natural, that's when we get sick. When we eat processed food, we eat um, genetically modified foods, we drink sodas, we drink iced tea full of white sugar. White sugar is not a natural product. When, when we drink Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola has so much unnatural man-made stuff inside it. And not just Coca-Cola. When I'm saying Coca-Cola, I'm talking about Coke soda in general. So it's not just Coca-Cola. It's Pepsi. It's all the sodas. And now we drink water that has been modified somewhat. So be careful when you get your bottle of water. A lot of people are selling bottled of water and claim that it's clean water but it's actually tap water so be careful with you when you get your water now so we get sick as i said because of a violation that's a violation of natural principles we eat food that is not natural if you eat natural food you'll stay healthy eat unnatural food it will eventually cause something to go wrong in your physical makeup. The food that is natural that God made is alkaline. It's naturally alkaline. And eating an alkaline diet is the safer way to avoid illnesses. One of the best ways to avoid cancer is eating a high alkaline diet. I'm not saying that will totally prevent cancer, but it will help, it will slow your chances of getting cancer. High alkaline diet. So you want to eat a high alkaline diet. You want to avoid food that is man-made because man-made food is hybrid food. So you want to avoid hybrid. Anything that's a hybrid food, avoid that. Try to eat natural food that was here or that is designed the way the creator intended for it to be designed now moving on dr cb one of the great uh, nutritionists uh healers naturopathic doctors 
stated that there's only one disease, and that disease is inflammation. Inflammation comes from eating food that is not natural. It comes from consuming processed foods. If you eat natural foods, you'll never get inflammation, but eating processed foods causes inflammation. White sugar, white rice, white flour, etc. Unrefined, uh, um, simple carbohydrates will lead to inflammation. Eating acidic foods, drinking beer, uh, consuming alcohol. Alcohol is very acidic. Beer, very acidic. Smoking cigarettes, drinking a high consumption of wine. Some wine has been known to reach uh, to, to help to help you, but the benefit you get from wine, you can get from a really high quality grape juice or high quality grapes. So it's best to eat the grapes. Consume the grapes to get you as as veritol. Eat the grapes. Drink the high quality kosher or the high um, quality Western grape juice. They have a very high quality grape juice. You can eat the, drink the kosher grape juice, very high quality. But get your get the benefit that you would get from wine. You can get that from grape juice or grapes. So try to consume the natural product. Eat the oranges instead of always trying to drink orange juice. Eat apples, the real apple that God created. Eat the bananas and try to get bananas that are not genetically modified. Try to eat natural, or try to eat or consume natural foods. Now, as we just said, we want to have a food that are high in pH, and pH should be above 7.25 or 7.5, basically 7.5. We discussed this in many of our videos. We discussed this often just to remind myself and remind you to try to eat as much alkaline food as possible. You can't go wrong if you have a diet that is high alkaline, a high alkaline diet. And if you avoid simple carbs, and if you deal with carbs, you want to deal with um, carbs that are high, carbs that are high in value. You don't want you you don't want to deal with with simple carbs. Once again, a general rule. Avoid foods that don't grow by them by, by themselves. Or uh, avoid foods that don't grow by itself. Also, avoid foods that have a commercial. Now, not, just, that's not to say that um, you can't eat a hamburger once in a while or something like that. But that should be very limited. If you're going to do that, that should be very limited. That you should eat that on a very limited basis. Try to avoid processed food. Go to a restaurant. Try to go to a restaurant infrequently. Because even food that are cooked at restaurants that you think is healthy, a lot of times filled with a lot of trans fats, um, a lot of um, different um chemicals to keep the stuff fresh etc so you want to avoid that try to eat fresh food try to go to the farmer's market if you can try to eat locally grown food in season if possible if not go to walmart and get the best you can get or go to whole food and get the best you can get a lot of times walmart deals with local vendors and i'm not sure about whole foods but if you can go to a farmer's market that would be my that would be my first priority Go to the farmer's market. Now, going back to looking at what we mentioned, we talked about alkaline foods, and um, going back to water. You want to drink alkaline water, but if you can't get alkaline water, if you take a 
Keep some green, some fresh lemons on hand. Squeeze some lemon juice inside your water. That will raise your pH level up. Green water is normally about seven. Tap water is, a little, is around seven. Fin water may be a little bit more than seven. But try to avoid tap water. If you, but if all you got is tap water, drink tap water. But if you have other water, other sources, spring water, or you got to purify, purify your water, do that. Try to avoid the spring water. But it, in both cases, if, if your water is not already 7.5 pH, put lime, sweet a little lime into your water. That'll raise your pH up. And that leads me to my segment of eight alkaline foods that will flush toxin and mucus from your body. And if you say that, Dr. CB said that the only disease is inflammation. Now, we talked about limes. Limes help to prevent accumulated acid in the blood. So limes help to prevent acid from accumulating in, in the blood. So that's one of the benefits of lime. It raises the pH in your water also. Now, let's look at the burdock, burdock tea. Burdock tea clears toxins from the blood. So both lime and burdock tea helps the blood. Burdock tea, once again, clears toxins from the blood. And now let's look at peaches. One of my favorite fruits is peaches. I, I, I love peaches. Peaches are beneficial for cleansing and detoxifying the body. Helps flush out um, harmful toxins from the, from the kidney and from the liver. So peaches help the kidney and the liver. Now, moving on, let's look at Sosaphorelia. Sosaphorelia is a diuretic, which means it, it is used to flush out the kidneys by stimulating urination in those who use it. It's also, it, it's also been known to pure, purify the blood. Because by purifying the kidneys, you automatically purify the blood because your blood is, the kidneys is what causes your blood to, click. that's the job of the kidney, is to regulate the uh, blood. So if you get the toxins out of your kidney, that all, that's automatic take, taking toxins out of your blood. So you want to make sure that you try that. Now another very powerful organic food is oregano. Oregano is rich in a high content of manganese. And if you can't get oregano, you should take manganese as a supplement. Oregano is rich in manganese, calcium, iron, fiber, and many other organic compounds. It's an ideal candidate for detoxifying the body. And you should, you should want to detox your body at least, at least once a month. Try to go to on a detox, a fruit detox, or just fast. I would recommend intermediate fasting, fast at least one day out of the month, have a time set, set aside for that, and I would say one to three days. Fast three days. Do an intermediate fast, meaning that you get up, you eat or drink something light, healthy in the morning. Then you fast, <coughs> Excuse me. Then you fast at least a 12 to 14 hour period. Then you eat a light uh, dinner or a light supper to break the fast. So you only eat two meals in a 24 hour period and do that for three days or just go to a point where you, you, where you drink juice or tea. You drink juice or tea in the mornings, no food, and fast, and then eat one meal that day. 
all that is intermediate fasting. So intermediate fasting helps the body's organs to uh, not work as hard. It also cleans out toxins. So try to, I would advise you to try to try to uh, do that intermediate fasting. If you eat three that three meals, eat meals that are don't eat heavy. Don't eat three heavy meals. In the morning, try to keep your carbs around 48 grams of carbohydrates. Try to spread your carbs out during the day. Don't eat a lot of sugary pancakes, a lot of sugary cereals. All that stuff causes sugar to get into your bloodstream, cause you to have so much high energy, and then you burn out. Because that sugar rushes into your bloodstream, you get a quick fix, and you burn out. Also, if you drink coffee, try to limit your coffee to drinking the two to three cups of coffee and stretch that out during the day. And drink a lot of water. Because coffee will cause you to become dehydrated. So drink a lot of water. Like I'm going to drink this good spring water right here. Good, clean spring water. The best thing you can ever drink, made by God, made by nature, spring water. <coughs> so, avoid eating a lot of unrefined sugar because pancake, most pancake servers just got a lot of unrefined sugar in it, and a lot of it has high fructose corn syrup, which is worse than unrefined sugar so avoid the sugar sugary uh stuff in the mornings try to if you eat pancakes eat pancakes spam the very rare or you can eat pancakes make sure your pancakes has maybe some um raw honey on it and eat the still eat pancakes spam the rare eat them maybe once a month also Try, try to avoid eating cereals that are, because well, most cereal has a very high carb, carb content. A lot of, that, a lot of those carbohydrates are simple, carb, simple carbohydrates, not good for you. So I would spread my carbs out during the day and I would eat hot, I would eat complex carbs, not, not simple carbs. And you can check our channel out and we have a list of, um, we have videos dealing with the difference between simple carbs and complex carbs. Now, let's move on. Let's look at blue barium. Of, I'm sorry, blue barium. I have to apologize. The word is blue bourbon. And blue bourbon is an organic, it's a direct also, used for stimulating the release of urine from the body, thereby causing the toxins to be released from, from the body. So it, uh, it, calls, it, clean, it calls you to clean toxins out by causing you to urinate frequently. Now, that's number six. We got two more. Let's look at two other alkaline foods that should be consumed that a lot of most people are not consuming. These are alkaline foods that most people are not consuming. Let's look at uh, soy sauce. Soy sauce is an alkaline fruit whose juice is known to be a very effective diuretic. It can be used to cleanse the gastrointestinal tract and remove excess toxins from the body. And next, last, next but last but not least is tilka tea. Tilka tea is a diaphoretic, and a diaphoretic induces surreal. Uh, Sweet, I'm sorry, do, 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 reduce, induces sweat. 
And this is a very powerful, a very powerful means of ridding the body of harmful toxins also. So these eight um, alkaline foods or alkaline um, products that we've just discussed all help the body to get rid of toxins. And in this world we live in with air pollution, with uh, all kind of uh, poisons in the air, um, all kind of f uh, chemicals in the food, foods that we eat, we have to be, we need to be co constant of cleansing our body of toxins. That's why fasting is good. That's why I recommend to uh, fast at least once one day out of the month. That's why I recommend to how to eat one meal a day from time to time. You don't have to eat one meal a day every day. Maybe maybe eat one meal a day, one day. Next day, eat three balanced meals. But if you, and then if you're gonna eat three balanced meals, just make sure that those three balanced meals are very healthy, free of intoxicants, free of um, chemicals, free of um, man-made poisons. And that's kind of hard to do sometimes, but that's all the part of eating clean. Eating clean means that every day you try to you strive to eat cleaner than you ate the, the, the uh, first day. So each day is a building on the on the each day is building. You build on that. You're building. You're making. You're trying to make better choices. You're trying to you're trying to go from going to a fast food joint every day to maybe going one going every other day. And then get to it going every other day, then you just go on the weekends and you use that as your cheat day. But you want to avoid, your, your goal is to get to where you don't go to fast food places, period. And if you do go to a fast food place, go online, Google the place, check their menu out. And they'll tell you how many carbs that the that are in the, the food. You can look on you go to McDonald's website and find out how many carbohydrates are in a Big Mac. You can find out how much fat is in a Big Mac. You can find out how much protein is in a Big Mac. All the nutritional value for every fast food joint is online. So you just go to their Google it, uh, whatever search browser you use, it might be Google, whichever one you use, and you can go and find out just what you're eating. So that's our topic today, eat to heal. Eating to heal means to eat food that are high alkaline. That's also a part of eating clean too. Eating food with a high alkaline content. Fresh, naturally grown vegetables. Green vegetables, cabbages, uh, mustard greens, ton of greens, broccoli, lettuce, and there are many other green vegetables, but those are some. Zucchini, squash. Squash is yellow vegetable, but it's also but it's high in alkaline. Broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts. You want to eat, and if you go to a restaurant, Get a salad, get a garden salad, get a leafy garden salad with a wide range of vegetables in it. And, be, and put a light um, coat of dressing on it. Don't put too much dressing. A lot of the dressing has high fruit of corn syrup in it. So be careful with your dressing when you, when you eat your salads. So, eat to heal, eat to live, and until next time, we will wish you happiness, health, peace of mind, all of that. And like I said, if you want a free confidential health analysis, where we look at where you're at for your health. We'll have you fill out a, a, a health questionnaire 
And once you fill it out, send it back to us, and then we'll we'll, then we'll talk. We'll go over it with you, and we'll help you decide what's the best course if you want to lose weight, whatever. But and if you and we and we know well not it's in our sphere of um, practice, and what not, and if you dealing with something that's not in our sphere of practice, we will encourage you to seek out a medical doctor. To deal with that because I don't claim to be a medical doctor I'm a health coach I'm a nutritionist certified nutritionist I can help you with those things that if you do hopefully you won't need a doctor so reach out to me if you are interested email me Hassan is at gmail.com or text me at 229-425-8657 Like I said, eat to heal, eat to live. Every food, everything you eat should be in your best interest. And that takes a lot of time. That's not gonna have more that's not gonna have them overnight. But you should see each, each meal, you should look at a meal and say, that meal is good for me or that meal bad for me. So subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. Until next time. Peace, love, and happiness. Remember that as you think it, therefore you are. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a woman thinketh, so is she. I am what I think about all of the time. Peace.